What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and I'm extremely excited because the new Revit 2020 is finally out. And yeah, it's just the beginning of 2019, but yeah, that's I guess how Revit does its job. And today I'm going to be going through all of the new and exciting features of Revit 2020, some, what's new and what's going to be exciting in Revit 2020. But before we get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make Revit tutorials each week. And if you're just a beginner, I've created a cool Revit beginner course, so check that out, first link in the description. Okay, so let's get into the Revit 2020 overview and all of the new features. So when we open up Revit 2020, it looks like this. So it's, uh, well, it's uh, completely different uh, compared to the uh, earlier version, the 2019, but it's basically got a similar functionality. The first thing that you're going to notice is that uh, you don't really have those options for the templates. So if you want to create a new project, you go into new and then here you choose the template. You don't have those template shortcuts outlined over here. I'll have to look into it. Can you maybe add it or can you customize this new uh, open opening interface? Now the uh, previous models that you have opened up over here are over here. The previous families are over here. That's very similar to the uh, earlier version of Revit. Also, the learn, uh, well, the learn options used to be here in the right side of the screen. Now we don't really have that anymore. So you've got this drop down menu over here and here you've got some uh, essential skills videos and also getting started videos. Also, you have this what's new option and it opens up your web browser and there you've got a complete like list of all of the new features. So if you want a more in-depth uh, in-depth mm, I don't know, number of features that are have been updated or brought to the new version of Revit 2020, you can check that out. Also, what's completely different is the fact that you can go to the start menu anytime you want. So now we're at the start menu, but if we go here to this button and just click it, we're in Revit. Now, because you don't really have any new, any new projects opened up, I can't really see anything, but if I go over here, I can go back home. Also, you see we have a new shortcut, Control D. So I really have to do the shortcut. I can't click the button. I love shortcuts. So Control D and we're back. So now let's just start a new simple project so I can continue showing you some of the new features. So I'm just going to go here to new, choose an architectural uh, template and let's just click OK. And as you can see, now we are in the new project and that little button is still here. So unlike in previous versions of Revit, you can always go back to the start menu and look at all of the previous uh, models and stuff like that. And then just here you go back into the model. Okay, so once we're here, let's see the new feature and the new and exciting feature that everybody's been talking about is the PDF import. So Revit didn't used to have a PDF import. So when I go here to insert, now we have this PDF button. Now, uh, there were some kind of uh, walkarounds how to import PDF into Revit and you really needed to use uh, AutoCAD for that. But now I just go here to PDF. I can go to my desktop. Here I've got a simple house PDF. I just click open. And here we've got some basic options to set up so you can set up your resolution. I prefer to have a uh, large resolution and here uh, you just do the, like the page settings. And also here you've got a, a menu if you want to uh, learn more about this new feature. But if I just click OK, I can place that uh, PDF over here. And here we get that uh, produced by Autodesk student version <laughs> because this is, of course, a student version. And also, if you want to download this Revit 2020, I will be doing a, a new tutorial that's going to be coming up next Thursday, I think. And uh, so subscribe to check that out. But anyway, here we have uh, this is basically just the PDF that I've exported. And here I can uh, just go and enable snaps for this PDF and then if I go maybe to wall I can as you can see snap according to this so I can find elements over here on this floor plan perhaps and I can just snap to that and continue working on this PDF and basically using this PDF as 
as a reference material for uh, maybe my walls or stuff like that so maybe if I go to 5 inch wall as you can see I can snap to all of these PDF points it's not just loaded in as an image it actually works as snaps okay so that's for the PDF so I'm just going to delete this and now let's take a look at another cool and exciting feature and that's for loading in elements so we're staying here at the insert tab and let's talk about loading in SketchUp models so you could load uh, load SketchUp models in previous versions but here we have some advanced options so if I go here to import CAD and I'm just going to switch now to uh, to my SketchUp files and here I've got a SketchUp model that I downloaded I'm just going to open that up and here it is in the floor plan I can unpin it and maybe center it here in the model and let's just go into 3D so this is what we have and usually these SketchUp models were really annoying because if you were to change maybe to shade it usually the materials wouldn't apply and it would uh, would have been ugly now the materials uh, are kind of carried through into Revit, so the uh, basically the operability of Revit files within Revit is a lot better. And also here, if you go to realistic, it's going to go back to that ugly gray. But luckily, if I go to my Manage tab, and here I have materials, and if I open up the uh, materials uh, dialog here, you're going to notice that here we have some weirdly weirdly named materials so as you can see over here we've got these weird materials and basically weirded named materials means that Revit took these materials from the SketchUp model and loaded them over here so if you go through this you're going to notice that here we have this beige material and also if I scroll down maybe we'll find some other ones so maybe we've got this one, we've got this one, this one. So we've got uh, a bunch of these weird materials, but uh, for example, this one, layer layer zero, it's obviously not a native Revit material. But if I go here to appearance, you're going to notice that it's just a regular gray. And same thing goes for the other ones, so maybe windows. Uh, the graphics might be set up to some color but when you go to appearance they're all this ugly gray so what you can do is you can either copy these numbers or just maybe do uh, just try to get it similar so maybe let's say we want blue for windows uh, skylights as well let's do that some shade of blue let's see what else do we have so here we have some other ones okay so we've got some wood floor so let's do that with some wood color perhaps I don't know this isn't really a wood color but you get the point I'm just trying to make it kinda wood-ish okay let's say like this thing let's go with this one let's see what can we do Okay, so let's do these wood materials, hit apply, let's go up to these that we have over here. So, which ones are interesting? Okay, maybe this beige one, let's do that. Let's do the green, who cares? So, I'm just, going to, I'm just changing materials over here and I'm looking here what it looks like in the graphics and then I go to appearance and just change the material here I'm just going to go wild and do it pink and let's hit apply okay and now as you can see some of the materials changed so we have some changed materials but of course you would have to go back to the materials try to find all of them and uh, make some changes and then uh, once you made those changes maybe here for the carpet okay the carpet is okay but uh, you get the point. So you go to the materials, you change the materials, and then even when you go to realistic and even when you render, you will get that uh, realistic render appearance. So that's the important part. And if you go back into shaded, it's just going to use the, uh, the colors of the materials from the original uh, SketchUp model. While we're here talking about materials, uh, brings me on to the next topic of improvement, and that's new and improved materials. So if you go over here, and if you search for your materials here we have those loaded materials so these are the ones that uh, come with Revit and if I just scroll down over here you're going to notice that some of these have this little uh, kind of orange corner uh, down 
left and this basically means that this is an improved material so it's got improved appearance assets uh, and those are the new versions so the ones that have those uh, orange corners are supposedly better materials for rendering so if you want to use some of those some of those materials renderings should be a lot better than in if they were rendered in maybe some previous versions of Revit so that's that's quite cool now we have to talk about the hot new tool and that's the path of travel that's what everybody's talking about so here in Revit there is a new analysis tool so if you go to analysis uh, analysis uh, tab here we have this path of travel so this is in this new parametric tool that basically allows you to calculate the shortest path of travel uh, from the building so if you're doing maybe analysis in in case there is a fire or something like that what's the quickest way to go from point A to point B and Revit will actually recognize doors and furniture stuff like that now I'm going to be talking about this tool in depth in a separate tutorial where I explain the, the full functionality of the tool but just as a quick demonstration so if I go here to path of travel first you do the point where maybe where you start the path and where you end the path maybe here and as you can see Revit basically calculates here we have to go around the bed through the door through this door next to this bed and then we can get out of the house so that's the path of travel and then that arrow stays there but of course you can delete it if you want and this is that model from my beginners course so again as I said if you want to check it out follow the first link in the description where I show you how to model this building Okay, moving on. The filter tool is something that has significant improvement. So if you go here to view and if we go to filters, there we go. So usually you just pick something out. So if you go here to or for an option, it, you got and and or both in the uh, previous version of Revit. But now if we go here to uh, or and here if we have maybe doors and floors and walls and ramps uh, selected, stuff like that. And now you have this option where you can choose just one of these that you have selected from the categories. And then you can do uh, your or uh, for those. So that's the like the new option for filters but again filters are something that I'm going to be doing in in-depth uh, tutorial in the near future so again as I said make sure to subscribe for that so let me just cancel out of this another thing that got everybody exciting is the new wall options so if we go here to architecture to wall as you can see here from all of the basic drawing tools that we have we also have the ellipse tool so now we can create elliptical walls so that's I guess that's cool so, so we can create these walls and then you can play around with these elliptical walls and of course you can then use I don't know split element trim and extend to create interesting new uh, buildings using these ellipses so that's nice okay here I guess I messed up so let's delete this segment okay it looks cool so there you go you can create elliptical walls in Revit and segments look like this and then you can extend them if you want so you can play around with those ellipses also on this side you can extend it as well and one more new and exciting thing that I wanted to share with you is copying legends from sheet to sheet so if I go and create a new legend view so let me just go here to views legends let's create a new legend view and let's use this scale this is just for demonstration purposes and let's maybe go to annotate and let's annotate something for this so I don't know let's do something like that just to have something on screen back to annotate can we do some insulation there we go so okay we've got something over here let's do a uh, filled region as well so let's do something like that okay so we've got a, a legend view over here and let's say we want to place this now in our uh, in our sheet so let me go here to this sheet let's find legends open up this legend view and place it over there okay so we've got this legend view over here now what I can do now is just select it go copy paste align to selected views and here I can choose the second one 
and now if I go to the second one, there we go. So we can copy it and have it on multiple sheets because basically legend views you want to maybe copy the same legend and have it in different views. So that's really useful uh, in the new Revit 2020. Now there are some uh, new developments as far as uh, some Revit structure elements and if you're interested in a separate tutorial where I explain those new features uh, tell me in the comment section below and then maybe I can create that video and also this is not the only features as I said if you want to have a full list of features just go here to learn what's new and that will open up a web page where you have more of these features. Also, I'm going to be doing an in-depth tutorials on some of these features later on, so make sure to subscribe. And if you want to learn Revit 2020, or basically any version of Revit, if you're a beginner and want a complete course where I take a house from beginning to the end and do a complete project, check out the first link in the description where I, uh, where you can get access to that course where I explain all of that. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.